on the front porch singing an old familiar song. The tractor's in the barn and the pastor's freshly mown. Looking through the screen door, the aroma draws you in to the heart of the home where old memories begin. Cooking with her friends, sharing recipes together, stories and songs, making new memories the heart of the home. Welcome to Heart of the Home. Gosh, I'm not in the kitchen. I kind of feel weird about this. Mm -hmm. Guys, we're not cooking. We're not doing anything but visiting. I'm joined once again by Melton Campbell. Matt Dibler and Darren Osborne. You know them, you love them, you have enjoyed their music for many, many years. You still enjoy Melton's music every week with the inspirations. Right. You go back on the road December 28th, mm -hmm. and um, that means it will be once again time to hit the trail. You hit the ground running in January, February, March, April. Absolutely. Not far from here either. No. No, you'll go to Rome, Alabama, Georgia Mountain. Gainesville. Georgia Mountain. Yeah, yeah. So a yep. lot of close by places. We are. We stay pretty much in the first part of the year. We stay towards the south. And you, mm -hmm. you stay oh, pretty yeah. much Georgia, Florida, Alabama, South Carolina. We stay in right. the south. Stay out of that snow as much as we can. That's right. And you're gone a lot now. Gone pretty good bit. First part of the year is Matt will tell you when he was there. That's probably 75, 80 percent of our year is first mm -hmm. part of the year. Usually January through April. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty steady. You know, four, three, four, some five day weekend. Let's talk about recording because the first of the year you usually do some recording. Mm -hmm. How's that going to work this year? Really don't know. I mean, uh, we're just going to have to play it by ear and see how it goes. Don't really know who's going to be there and who's mm -hmm. going to be mm -hmm. who's going to be singing. But uh, me and Mike, I know, will be there. And I, who, who there is that? Who's there? And, and you know, we talked about this um, last year. Darren was on the recording, right? And that song was taken off. And now that we've shared it with people, I hope it will be requested. Right. Now, what could we do to get a CD of the three of y'all? Is that possible? <laughs> I don't know. They could record this show. That's right. <laughs> That's right. They could hit DVR. That's right. yeah. I'm recommending That's that. Right. If you're smart, folks, That's you right. will hit DVR because you will have some copies of some great music by these three guys. Now, Darren, um, I know that the song you wrote, Walking by Faith, meant a lot to you because you truly had been walking by faith when you stuck with the inspirations for four years. Now you're back preaching all the time, and I know you feel so good about that. Yeah, I do. I, I, I enjoy pastoring the church, and I, I would say that I, I do miss singing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that I, I'd be foolish to say, no, I don't miss it at all. And the people but, miss you. Well, I... I appreciate that. and You I, saw I love, that today in the restaurant. You know, I mean, that is so obvious when you're mm -hmm. out in public. And I love I love the friends that I made along the way. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what God has in store. Um, and I don't think God is, is finished maybe even with using my talent in the singing area. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm just looking for God Let's to... Let's talk about your talent. What happened last year? What happened last year? You won a silver telling. Mm. Oh, okay. You did singing. our Christmas what? special. Do y'all remember mm. coming in and singing with we him did. upstairs? What did you sing? Turn, Turn that, that city? city. And you went downstairs. And what's the song you sung? Uh, I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. It was perfect. It was right on, and the setting was great. And, uh, yeah, I was very proud of that show. We really had a good time. It was fun. It was fun. And we had a great group of people here that day. Um, Johnson Collins was here. And we had a soldier who had just returned from Iraq. And it was just a special, special time. And I think that's what the holidays are about. Mm -hmm. Special times with special people and special friends. Now, Matt, what's happening with you? Well, it's been an interesting year, of course, uh, with Byron. You know, they, he w found was missing. They found his body. We had his funeral. And it seemed like within a matter of just months, you know, a lot of things took place. My uncle, which was like a father to me, passed away just shortly after that. Mm -hmm. And then there's some things in our own personal life, our family, that were just, you know, just devastating. And But God's grace is sufficient, you mm -hmm. know, and, and your real friends come through. And I right. mean, and even people that, you know, don't feel the same way as others, they have that right, you know. Right. And the fact is, it's real. We're real mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. We're real, pe real people with real situations that we face in life. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for a God of second chances. You know, Amen. Jonah talks about And I made that. a statement to you one day. I said, I, I'm like a mother to you. And I have had every emotion you can have, including the one that I want to kick your tail sometimes. Right. You, you know, I that. just, I love you dearly, and I understand you are only a man. Yeah. You know, and I, I never lived in a glass house. 
Sometimes yeah. I wanted to, but I never have. I, I made a statement this last weekend that uh, people, you know, out sitting in the audience, they look at us on stage and think that we're something put up on a pedestal. And, and I you're told not. them, I said, I am no different than any of y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I have the same trials, the same problems that you have. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great privilege to travel like that. It is. It's a great honor and it's a great privilege. But with every great honor and great privilege comes a great responsibility. Right. Mm -hmm. And you accept that responsibility. Mm -hmm. And, and that you have to accept that response, just like being a father. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest joys in my life is being a father. I love my daughters. I love my family. I thank God for my girls, and I get to spend time with them all the time, and mm -hmm. I enjoy that. But with that privilege becomes a great responsibility. Right. You know, there's times mm -hmm. you want to be their friend. There's times you've got to be dad, and you've got to mm -hmm. accept the responsibility. But, you know, I understand. You know, to me, you said this, something about kicking my tail and stuff like that, and I I've had people say different things. Most people are very kind, and, mm -hmm. and but they're hurt too. You know, mm -hmm. I heard one one counselor that I went and talked to. He said, uh, "Hurting people hurt people, mm -hmm. and when they're hurting, they want to lash out." You know, mm -hmm. and that's what it is. A lot of people have been hurt. You mm -hmm. know, and 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 you have to sympathize with that and realize, right. you know, they ha they have a right to that. Right. You know, and I and I don't. I don't play that down. I, I accept that and say, right. you know what, I'm sorry, you know. Well, and, and that's what it is all about. We are all human. Right. We are all human. And and um, I never felt that I that you had to ask forgiveness from anybody, you know, mm -hmm. because this, anything that happens in your life is between you and God, and I really feel that way. We're going to share some music with people now that um, shares a message from God. And y'all have chosen very special songs today. And I think that's important because there's always a message in a song. So sit back, guys, and you're going to get to enjoy once again these boys that I call Triple Trouble because they, on occasion, they do some wild and crazy things today. They're going to be a wonderful song in store for you. So sit back and enjoy. This is not the end. It's resurrection ground. We gather together. To say our goodbyes to our precious loved one. Oh, how our hearts ached inside. Then we went to the place where they lowered their body down. Some call it a grave. I call it resurrection ground. Resurrection ground. No more graves alive. We'll meet them in the air. No more parting there. With Jesus we'll be for all eternity. This is not the end. It's resurrection ground. We come here often to see where she lay. It doesn't seem so long ago she ran around and played. How sweet it would be if we were standing round when this cold grave, it turns to resurrection ground. Resurrection ground, no more graves allowed. We'll meet them in the air. No more party there, with Jesus will be for all eternity. This is not the end, it's resurrection ground. Resurrection ground, no more graves allowed, we'll meet them in the air. No more parting there, with Jesus will be for all eternity. This is not the end, it's resurrection ground. No, this is not the end, it's resurrection ground. Wow, I know you people enjoyed that. Now, Resurrection Ground, you know what it meant to me. The day I met you, six weeks after I buried my husband, mm. I'd been in a very, very deep depression. And, um, you know, Matt, I have to tell you this publicly. When the things that happened to you happened this year, my greatest fear was that you would die over there. 
And I knew that as long as you were here, things can be worked out. You know, sure. that, that once you're gone, there's no working things out. That was my greatest fear. And I know the first Sunday that you didn't get to preach, I was more worried about you than anything. And I, and I knew resurrection ground means a lot to me, but I knew that wasn't the time for you. Right. But I was very right. worried about it because I knew that I had, depression could set in. I had several people call concerned like mm -hmm. that. And, um, you know, without going into detail, I mean, you, you know, I, I failed the test. I failed. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't have a problem saying that. It's hard to say it, but it's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. um, but it's real. Mm -hmm. And it's me, and I'm sorry for that. But at the same time, um, the situation is, I told, my, I told somebody one time, I was like, you know, I'm not going to, do something like that, you know, because it's not time for my life to be over. Uh, my kids knew me in part as a failure to mm -hmm. a degree, mm -hmm. but they didn't know me as a coward. Mm -hmm. And that was a coward's way out, leaving everybody else with it and just mm -hmm. get out. And so they didn't know me as a coward, and uh, I was going to face this thing. And mm -hmm. by their, by the Lord's help and grace, by my wife and my children, I'm in tremendous support there. Uh, and boy, God, God's just good. That's mm -hmm. all there is mm -hmm. to it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I would just go one step at a time. Can we talk a little bit about the first Sunday you chose a church to visit? <laughs> yeah, I really didn't choose the church. Uh, you got to understand, for the first time in my kids' life, I got up and was going to church without them because mm -hmm. they went back to the church that I pastored, great church. Crossroads mm -hmm. Baptist Church is a great church. Mm -hmm. um, and my wife had already made plans to go see uh, her mother and father. Her father has Alzheimer's, and she wanted mm -hmm. to go see him. And so I woke up and, you know, tragedy you know had taken place that week and for the first time in 20 years in my life I didn't know where I'd go to church mm -hmm. if I went somewhere where they knew the inspirations I'd have questions if I went somewhere they knew me as a preacher I'd have questions mm -hmm. and I wanted to disappear I remember laying in bed I remember laying there in bed and thinking Lord I'm gonna get up I'm gonna do everything I can just to get out of this bed but I don't know where to go to church mm -hmm. and immediately the Lord put a place on my heart that I normally wouldn't have chosen because I was raised Baptist and mm -hmm. all this stuff. And, and the Lord put on my heart free chapel over in Gainesville, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And um, I never had been there, never had heard the preacher preach a message. I just, it came clearly to me to go to that church. And I thought, well, I ought to be able to disappear among 4,000 people. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I went, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I went in and I and was able to sit down and nobody recognized me. And I was happy with that, you know. And, um, the preacher preached a great message on the home, and I, mm -hmm. I've got it on DVD. We watched we watched it uh, just the other last night. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, lies that sabotage your marriage, mm -hmm. and boy, what a great message! And everything in the messages that I had heard while go, uh, while visiting there was directed right to me. I mean, one one message that the preacher gave me uh, to listen to was uh, uh, three days from nowhere," mm -hmm. and I thought, "Boy, does that fitting from where I am?" Mm -hmm. I mean, it just. You know, I was telling Darren just uh, today, I said, you know, a lot of times preachers get up and say, you know, when you fail, when you get down, you better watch it. God's going to kill you. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I understand God can and he does punish us. And mm -hmm. if you go without chastening, you're not a child. But the goodness of the Lord leadeth men to repentance. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell you how good God has been to me, uh, not because of me, but because of who he is. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it's just been wonderful. I mean... But yeah, that church has been a great help to me. That preacher had been a tremendous blessing to me. And, and uh, he may not even know it, but I've called and left messages to tell him that, you know, hey, I appreciate him preaching right. to me. Well, you used to preach to me, and I would sit there and I would think, how did he know what kind of week I had? And, and you know, it's funny because, because of North Georgia now today, I'm very upbeat and I'm very positive. There are a lot of days it takes a lot to be positive and upbeat. But sure. I try to really remain that way because I want people to get a positive uplifting from that program. And sometimes I go in and I've had a really bad day. I've had a really bad night. And, and you know the history with my child and you know the things I've faced. But I never, I try to really be upbeat. And it's very, very hard some days. And some days I think, oh, Lord. But there's a saying, the good Lord won't put more on me than I can handle. I That's wish right. he didn't trust me so much. <laughs> right. He has trusted me right. a lot. And um, right. I always come through somehow. I, sometimes I amaze myself. Now, we just left the cemetery. And you ask me, is it still hard? It is not hard anymore. Right. So um, things have changed. Things have changed. Right. And I have a much better life now. Right now, we're going to go to a song that I know you're going to enjoy. Sit back and once again enjoy these wonderful three young men. Enjoy now.
How great it is to serve a living God. I listened as a man cried out to his God of wood and stone. And it broke my heart to see all the tears that he shed alone. For I knew that it was hopeless that he would not receive an answer from the God he served that could not hear nor see. So I fell down on my knees to pray like so many times before. And I boldly ask my God to hear my prayer once more. And it seemed that the heavens just opened up and I could hear him say, Yes, my child, I can hear you. What do you need today? How great it is. To serve a living God Who knows each step I take And every path I trod How great it is To serve a God that's real Who sees my every tear and knows just how I feel. How great it is to serve a living God who knows each step I take and every path I trod. How great it is to serve a God that's real who sees my every tear and knows just how I feel. Who sees my every tear and knows just how I feel. How great it is. Wow, what a wonderful song. Now, Melton, that's on the new CD, it is. isn't it? it is. Tell me about that song. Uh, I mean, what can you say about it? Just how great it is to serve a living God, a God that's, that's not dead. I remember know? your excitement the first day I heard that. You mm -hmm. had it on a CD and it you is. said, Come out here, you've got to hear this. Now, and that's one that touches everybody, doesn't it? It, it is. And I, just a little story behind that song <laughs> we had done picked all the songs that we were going to record on this mm -hmm. album, the, the new album, How Great It Is the album and me and Darren were in the back of the bus he was riding with us and we didn't I didn't decided that I was going to do walking by faith that I was going to record it mm -hmm. and uh, so me and Darren was sitting there looking in the box and we looked down we didn't listen to it because people send us all kinds of CDs and mm -hmm. we're look, looking through the box and uh, I said well we're about well we got one more and we reached down there and there was one CD stuck down up under the flap in the bottom of a cardboard box mm -hmm. and I pulled it out so we got one more to listen to we put it in Darren looked over at me. I started tearing up. My eyes was tearing up. My chin started quivering. And I said, wow. that song's for me. Oh, yeah. Wow. Now, who wrote that song? Mike Payne wrote that. Same guy that wrote the song, When He Was On The Cross, I Was On His Mind. Oh, what and an wrote, awesome song. He broke the chains. Yeah, he wrote He Broke The Chains. Yeah. Sure did. And, he, and didn't he write it? It was, it was written in the 70s. 70s. Nobody had recorded You're that kidding. song. You're kidding. Well, it's so up to date. It's so yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Now, who sings the lead on that on the CD? I do. Okay. Now, could it have been any better? Only if Matt would have sung it. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it would be That's number right. one right now. Only if Bill would have sung it. That's yeah. right. If Bill Sr. did sing it. Yeah, Bill's got a great voice. Oh. Yeah. What an awesome message. It's a very good Now, message. does he still write today? That's a 30-year-old song. I think he's still, he's still writing, writing today. I listened to that song this last week it, with him singing it. Mm -hmm. the, the fellow singing it. It's, it's just got a touch on it. Mm -hmm. We live in a day and time with... Uh, Diverse religions, mm -hmm. you know, and and I, I respect other people's right to believe what they want to believe, mm -hmm. and, uh, but I also respect the fact that I believe in the one true God, mm -hmm. and 
you know, it's sad to see how dedicated people are to false religion. Mm -hmm. And we as Christians have the right religion and aren't right. any more dedicated than we are. And that song deals with that, how great it is to serve a living God. It's an amazing, amazing privilege. It sure is. And why do you think it took 30 years for that song to be recorded? I think it was the time. It was. The election uh -huh. year, all that kind of stuff. I think uh -huh. it all plays into it. Right. I really do. God has a plan. That's right. Now, Darren, what is my favorite song? My Lord's Been Walking. <laughs> and? What song should you sing on Easter Sunday? On Easter Sunday? Old Rugged Cross. Oh, no, no. <laughs> do you know how much oh, trouble yes, he I got do. in? <laughs> yeah. See, I tell I'm everybody. I'm sitting thinking about Christmas. <laughs> Easter, <laughs> Easter Sunday. Easter. Easter Sunday, everybody should sing four verses by Old Rugged Cross. I'm going to call you up every Easter from now on and, <laughs> and sing all four to verses me. to you on the phone if I have to. There are songs that we identify with. And Love Lifted Me is one of those that mm -hmm. I just, I can remember walking down that church aisle that morning and I know exactly what happened. Love Lifted Me. And that is a song. There are so many songs that touch people's hearts and not everybody goes to church every Sunday. Right. But if you sit down, and, and I've done this and my mother always did this, she would sit down under a tree and have a talk with God. And God would say, okay, Hazel, I've heard enough. You know, because <laughs> mother wouldn't, you know. And, but it is that music, whatever it takes to touch your heart, right. whatever it takes. And I think when you got so excited about that song, you knew that there would be people touched by that song. You know, my favorite, all-time favorite song, I and mean, everybody just about knows, is Heaven Came Down and Glory Filled My Soul. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite mm -hmm. hymnal song. That's the song that I got saved by. Mm -hmm. And uh, that song, How Great It Is, just kind of hit me about like, Mm -hmm. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. It just really hit me right between the eyes that our religion is the only religion that you can go back to an empty tomb, mm -hmm. that he's not there. He's mm -hmm. risen. Mm -hmm. He lives in your heart. And there's no other religion. There's a body laid in there. They're mm -hmm. dead. Mm -hmm. All the other religions are dead. You know, so I don't, you know, that's just, that's my feelings. You know, I, I don't, I, how can we not say that we don't serve a living God? That's right. Now, how do you feel about Swept Me Off My Feet? Because I have seen you get the audience absolutely amazed with that song. See, but, I, but you, you, you put yourself in the position, whenever we start learning songs or finding songs, you, you put yourself in the position of the song and how that song ministers to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can go back to the very point and the time in my life mm -hmm. when I was swept off my feet. Mm -hmm. I could take you back to the spot I was sitting. I could take you back to the spot where I prayed, mm -hmm. the places we went to after we got through praying, the, the praises that, I mean, just the, the goody feeling that you had inside. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, it, you know, there's, there's no experience like that if you hadn't been saved. There's no right. experience like, like the, the feeling that you feel inside, the, like a big, humongous rock has been lifted off your shoulders. Exactly. Most of the songs that, that Melton sings, and I, I just yeah. listen to you talk, uh, Mercy at Midnight, uh -huh. it deals about salvation. And mm -hmm. I think probably because the, the greatest day in Melton's life outside of, of meeting his wife and getting married was the day he got saved. Right. Mm -hmm. And so any song about salvation, I know Melton's going, man, he's going, I'm not ashamed. You oh, know, yeah. He gets up there and, and knocks a home run because he loves the Lord because he saved his soul. Right. And so that's a great right. And I'm not ashamed is another one that, mm -hmm. that it really and truly does minister to people. Right. You know, it absolutely does. Well, right now, we're going to let you once again enjoy the music from Triple Trouble. These three guys are going to end today with a great song. Sit back and enjoy. A loved one knew he'd reached the end of life's journey. He'd been holding to God's hand a long time as I knelt. By his bed, my heart was thrilled at what he said. If I go or if I stay, victory is mine. I'm a winner either way. If I go or if I stay, I will still have my Jesus each passing day. I'll have a healing here below. Or life forever if I go. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm a winner either way. None of us really know about tomorrow. We must prepare to go to heaven any day. While we're here, let's trust the Lord. He'll lead us safe to our reward. And by his grace, We'll be a winner either way. I'm a winner either way. If I go or if I stay, I will still have 
my Jesus each passing day. I'll have a healing here below, or life forever if I go. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm a winner either way. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm a winner either way. From the heart of my home to the heart of your home, Merry, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in to Heart of the Home, and thank you for being loyal to our mission. Our mission is to visit with you and to share blessings with you. Our blessings come today from? Fran Kathy. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas from Matt Dibler. Merry Christmas from Darren Osborne. Merry Christmas from Regina Camp. Merry Christmas from Melton Campbell and all the Campbells. Merry Christmas from Gail Ray. Merry Christmas from Ralph Ray. Denise Lavidad from John Gail. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. We look forward to seeing you in the new year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appears and the soul felt his worth. A thrill of hope the weary world rejoiceth, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel's voices, O oh, night. Divine, O oh, night, when Christ was born, O oh, night, divine, O oh, night, O oh, night, divine. 